So, um, thank you very much, Warwick. Apparently, there are a few questions out there for me um, and, and others, so maybe that'll happen a bit later on. Um, I'm going to present on behalf of Aaron Wall and uh, Jordan Goodrich, who are, are my co-authors. Aaron just finished a PhD, and uh, a lot of this material in here is from that. I want to start by pointing out, and I think we know this, New Zealand carbon stocks are quite high uh, relative to the rest of the world, um, so about 30% more. So, and it is spatially distributed, so we have quite a lot of carbon in our soils. And um, we've just heard about why carbon is important in terms of uh, sustaining uh, soil quality and providing nitrogen and phosphorus and, 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 and a lot of other properties as well um, for supporting resilient pastures. Um, there's also the fact that um, our terrestrial ecosystems, the soils and the plants, have taken up roughly 30% of the fossil fuels that have uh, CO2s that have been emitted into the atmosphere. It's been doing us a service. How long this will sustain, we don't know, but there are two very good reasons for maintaining um, carbon contents in soil. Uh, my job is more to talk about um, uh, what kind of um, aspects around resilient pastures we need to maintain or increase this carbon stock. So uh, like Mark, I, I think simply about soil carbon uh, and its stocks. Uh, we've got a plant on the left hand side there uh, that's dropping leaf litter and root litter. Um, that gets fragmented and that forms what I was referred to before as particular organic matter. That's organic matter that if you got a microscope out, you could identify it if you knew what you were doing, a root or a, a, a little bit of leaf or something like that. And then we, we had a little bit of talk about what the microbes are doing. What they are doing then is processing that material. Some of it spills out, some of the microbes die, and that gets what I think of welded onto clay and mineral surfaces where it is protected. That's called mineral associated organic matter. And that's the material that we want to have if we want to sustain our carbon stocks and soil because it's highly protected and it's not going anywhere. So how do we manage this kind of a process so that we keep carbon in our soil and we get these wonderful functions um, that Mark was talking about and the carbon sequestration as well. Now one of, the, one of the important aspects that come out of this then is that um, a lot of the carbon that is in soil comes from roots. So what you see above ground isn't necessarily helping you as much as you might like to think. It's coming mainly from the roots because of this processing through into the mineral surfaces. So if we are going to think about resilient pastures and how they may contribute to maintaining at best, uh, at worst, or improving the carbon stocks of soils, what do we need to be thinking about? And just as a quick aside, uh, the majority of New Zealand soils are at steady state under, under flat land for carbon contents. We're not quite sure what's going on in the hill country, but we're working on that. That's something we can come to. The, the reason that we have carbon in soil is because we have a small difference between the amount of photosynthesis that we have coming into the system and the amount that's going out in respiration. These are two very large processes that are going on every year. And as that carbon goes into the soil, it gets stabilized by microorganisms into this particular organic matter and the mineral associated organic matter. And we want to get it there so that we can hold it in this case for the services we were looking for. So these are my key messages that I'll come back to. And if we're thinking about resilient pastures, this is what we want to try and do. Maintain cover, continuous inputs of carbon into soil, which may mean that we need pastures that require less renewal. We may need to think about optimizing the supplemental feeds that we use because they go through uh, renewal periods as well. And I'll show you a little bit of that in a bit. One of the key things, and we've heard this multiple times, what are the roles of roots? We need to maintain roots and root inputs into soil. And we need to make sure that we are uh, getting dung returns back to the paddocks. And we'll talk about that in a bit as well. Okay, so what have I got here? This is some data that we've been collecting over the last 10 years or so. It represents about 25 years of CO2 exchange data from um, paddocks. So this is pasture scale, half hour measurements of CO2 exchange, and uh, the, 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 uh, the paddocks there are those gray lines, and the average 
is in that black line there. So you can see that you get a little bit of a gain in, in summer there, and then as you go into autumn and winter, and then into spring, uh, sorry, autumn and winter, you're losing carbon, and then into spring, you're getting this carbon dioxide being recovered again. Now, it looks like the system is gaining carbon, but you now need to subtract off what went out the gate in milk, and you need to subtract off what came out of the cows as CO2. And then you find that these systems tend to be pretty much carbon neutral. The point here is that the three red lines are three paddocks where they've gone through pasture renewal. So there was a time period when those soils were bare. Photosynthesis stopped, so your carbon input stopped. But the microorganisms, they keep churning away and you lose carbon. So you come to the end of this year for those renewed pastures and you've lost carbon. How fast they recover, we don't really know that very well yet. Probably it's gonna happen, but we don't really know all that well. So if we can reduce the number of times that we do this, that would be great. Um, I wanna now look at um, a supplemental feed. In this case, I'm, I'm looking at maize silage. I'm not picking on it, but this is one that we've got some data on. Um, about five years worth of data there, the green line there, now we're talking about total carbon ba uh, balances for the system, so that includes everything, milk and cow respiration and all the rest of it. And you can see with that green line, it's basically hovering around zero, little gains, little losses, little gains, but in a really pr reasonably predictable way. Now, if we take a paddock close by and we run this through maize, this is what we observed over that time period. So you can see two maize periods there. Um, there's a lot of ups and downs in there that I can explain, but I'll leave for the present. The big one are these very large losses that you can see towards the end of the season as you basically come and take all of the above ground biomass and put it somewhere else. So these systems lose large amounts of carbon. I think, what is it, nearly 15 tonnes of carbon over that time period. It's gone back into grass now, and the thing that we were hoping for was to see some sort of recovery start, and we have not observed that yet, so that that carbon would accumulate again back into those carbon pools. But we're yet to see that. We hope to, hope to see that in the future, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. One of the other problems, or interesting things that happens with particularly this, uh, with maize, but possibly other supplemental feeds, uh, is, is they look great, right? Because you, you get, this is the CO2 uptake by pastures and maize for those two sites, 18 tonnes and 20 tonnes. Um, and where does, where does all that CO2 go? Well, a lot of it goes back straight back into the atmosphere through plant respiration as the plants grow, but not, in, not as much in maize. So maize is not putting so much back into the atmosphere. And that is why you are getting these really large amounts of uh, biomass, above ground biomass in the maize relative to the pasture, right? Because it's not respiring as much. The kicker though is that the pasture is putting more below ground into the roots than the maize is. And so now you've got less carbon that can now feed into the soil carbon and be stabilized. So here's a challenge for us, right? How do we um, keep our carbon stocks high by maintaining root inputs into the soil so that we can sustain our carbon? So, and, and additionally with the maize, we're now harvesting that material. So we've done, this is, this is conceptual, right? A diagram of uh, the sorts of things that we're sort of thinking about here. So we've got time along the, the, the x-axis there and soil carbon stock um, along the top, uh, along the y-axis there. And if you look at that, the very top line there um, with the dashed lines, that's if you go through a pasture renewal every um, seven years, uh, sorry, every uh, seven years, 10 years, and you have enough time for it to be able to recover back to its uh, carbon stock and then it drops off and then goes back up again. But if you now drop that to going every seven years renewal, then you start to get losses over the long time as it grades down, and then the dotted line there is what might happen under maize. Now the difficulty in doing something conceptually like this is that we really need much better data on the recovery rates of that carbon stock and soil. And we don't have much in the way of measurement in New Zealand. I'm sure there are models that can address this sort of thing, but we really need hardcore data be, to be certain. So we need to understand that a little bit better. So uh, just to come back to the conclusions then, if we're wanting to maintain carbon and soil and we're thinking about what do we need out of whatever we consider resilient pastures, which is beyond production, but environmental benefits as well. It's about maintaining cover in the soil so there is continuous carbon inputs into it. 
and that it is particularly important that we think about the inputs into roots, not just what we see above ground so that we maintain that carbon stock. If we harvest all the above ground material and we take it somewhere else, and we're not having the animals um, eat it on site, we are going to lose the dung inputs into the soil, which also carries carbon with it and so sustains uh, carbon stocks as well. A small amount, but an important amount. Uh, so with that, uh, I'd like to thank um, the ability to be able to speak here uh, and the sponsors uh, for my work, um, New Zealand Agricultural Greenhouse Gas Research Centre um, and Kia ora. Thank you.